Hello everyone, welcome to this awareness webinar about Hodgkin's lymphoma and I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing it right and we are going to be talking about myths, treatments, diagnosis, awareness of it and we have with us Dr. Gopinathan, consultant hematology and BMT physician, uh, MGM Cancer Institute. Am I right doctor? Yeah. yeah Hi doctor. Yeah. yeah. How Hi. are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. I'll pronounce it all right. It's, it's Hodgkin's <laughs> it's lymphoma. It's really hard to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it is just named after the you know, older tradition of scientists describing the disease and then that is how it goes. Okay. So, uh, thanks for inviting me. Thanks for having me here. And in, it's in fact a pleasure for me to be here with you. Thank you, doctor. Uh, to start with basics, what is Hodgkin's lymphoma? Yeah. So, Hodgkin's lymphoma, basically, it's a cancer of your lymph nodes. Okay. Okay. So lymph nodes are basically they are uh, some you know mm. a, a specialized structures of the body. Mm. Basically, they help us uh, fight against some infections. Mm. So in blood, if you take, it's a part of blood and lymphatic system. That's what we say. Blood is an organized system. Okay. Though we say blood is just a fluid, blood also is considered as an organized system. Like it is an organ mm. which has multiple cells within, like red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets. Mm. So in the blood. In the white blood cells, we have multiple types again, mm. by name neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, and lymphocytes. Mm. Of which lymphocytes are the one which are produced in the bone marrow and they get trained in the lymph nodes. Okay. So basically, this lymph node is where the lymphocytes get trained mm. and they are the structures which help us fighting against infection. Okay. So Hodgkin's lymphoma is one such cancer mm. which arises from your lymphocytes within the lymph node. Okay. okay, so that is why it is called as Hodgkin's lymphoma and we need to get it right there because the treatment plans are different. Mm. In lymphoma, again, we have multiple types of lymphomas. We have Hodgkin's lymphoma, we have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, we have B non-Hodgkin's, we have T non-Hodgkin's, we have NK cell lymphoma and we need to get it really right because mm. our treatment plan and how we are going to follow up for the patient for the long time, mm. it's very important. So that's why we need to um, uh, get there right. What are the symptoms for this, sir? Yeah. So, in general, Hodgkin's mm. lymphoma, we first ask the patient this, the so-called B symptoms. That's what we mm. commonly ask, which states the patient, if he has persistent fevers, mm. you know, un unresolving fevers for three months duration or more. Okay. So, usually any fever more than 14 days, it is a red label sign for us. Like, you know, we need to investigate the patient more, mm. right? So, lo long-standing fever. Mm non-resolving so you see you get from the community right you see i have been visiting multiple doctors my fever is not coming down mm. so that's how these patients do come so non-remitting okay. fever second is weight loss you know mm. suddenly you can see that uh, so i've been doing well three months back but now i'm just you know not feeling like eating and i'm losing weight mm. so anybody who has lost 10 percent weight or more say for example if somebody is 70 kilogram mm. and they had lost seven kilograms in three months span of time then that is a significant weight loss. Okay. Mm. Okay. And third is drenching night sweats. Like, you know, when the fever goes away, they feel, uh, here, you know, very sweaty. Hey, very, very sweaty and the entire clothes get wet. Mm. Right. So sometimes people do say is that, you know, they go out, change the cloth, they have to change the clothes and then come back. So that is called drenching mm. night signs. So these three are the important signs of lymphoma, Hodgkin's mm. lymphoma per se, which we call fever. Uh, you know, are non-resolving for, you know, three months duration, weight loss, and then drenching night sweats. For that matter, any fever which is lasting more than 14 days and not responsive to your conventional medical management, you need to pay attention. Mm. Apart from these three cardinal signs, we have other symptoms, you know, sometimes mm. Hodgkin's lymphoma can come in your liver. Though I said it is a cancer of lymph node, mm. sometimes you may have liver as an important organ. So that time they can come to you with jaundice. Mm. And other than that, sometimes if the disease, if the patients have neglected it quite for some time, you know, then they will form a tight mass, you know, big uh, lymph nodal mass in the chest. So people can come to you with breathing difficulty. Sometimes mm. people can come to you with swollen arms. Okay, so these are all okay. some of the atypical presentations or atypical manifestations of Hodgkin's lymphoma and the list is, you know, so on. But mm. for the general public to know, you need to know these symptoms. Okay, but how common is it and uh, how often people get it? Yeah, so if you take... In the overall incidence of cancer, mm. hardly it may be constituting around 2 to 5 percentage. Okay, that's but among nice. the blood related cancers, you know, blood related cancers, it is one of the most commonest lymphoma that we see it around 30 percent. Mm. And we say a typical bimodal distribution in the age. Okay. So what do you mean by a bimodal distribution is this peaks in the early adolescence and adulthood. 
like somewhere between 10 to 30, this disease peaks. Mm. And then they have a plateau period, like between 30 to 50, you don't get to see this lymphoma is more common. Mm. But once after 50, 60 years, again, you see a peak. So this, we call it as a bimodal peak or okay. bimodal pattern, you know. So that is how the distribution disease epidemiology talks about. Mm. And our Indian data also sees, you know, it tells the very same pattern of distribution. Mm. But one thing is what you can see a difference between the rural and the urban community is mm. in rural communities, you can see people neglecting these symptoms for much longer time and they come to you with, you know, advanced stages mm. and with heavy disease burden. So that is how the disease epidemiology differs between a rural and urban community where in okay. the urban sense, with a lot of screening programs and all that actually going on, maybe this in the current last three to five years and, and so, we are picking up at a much earlier stage. Okay. Uh, once the patient identifies the symptoms and comes to you, how do you diagnose a doctor? Yeah. So basically, we'll start with a general workup. So uh, as mm. I said, common presentation of Hodgkin's lymphoma is fever. Mm. So first, we need to get sure, make sure that, you know, you're not missing out any infectious cause mm. for, you know, first, we need to rule out the infectious cause for fever. Mm. And then subsequently, once if you're, if all the tests are turning out negative, then we'll start the lymphoma workup. Okay. Right. Mm. So we'll just go with a simple test, like complete blood count. Mm. And then a renal function test, liver function test, viral markers. You will okay. get some basic infectious works like TB workup done because that is one common disease, you know, that can mimic lymphoma. Okay. So in our country, uh. we, we being in a lower middle income country, TB mm. is a very much mimicker, common mimicker of lymphoma. Okay. So any physician before labeling lymphoma, we need to rule out tuberculosis, okay. right? And then once we are not, you know, as I said, if the tests are getting negative, then we go for advanced testing, which includes your... CT thorax, CT thorax and CT okay. abdomen, CT scans. And mm. even on that, you know, if you're not able to exactly uh, differentiate, then we go for PET CT. Okay. okay. Based on that, then you will plan a lymph node biopsy. Since it's a cancer of lymph node, mm. we need to do a lymph node biopsy. biopsy. And lymph node biopsy is the specimen where you can exactly differentiate what type of lymphoma it is. And we have some advanced uh, testing on the lymph node by name immunohistochemistry. Okay. Right. So based on these two, uh, these modalities, we okay. diagnose Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay. And from there, we go on. Yeah. Once we diagnose, there comes treatment. Treatment. And we have several plans to treat a patient and it is very different to each patient. Right. How do you explain it? Right. How to treat a per yeah. patient? Yeah. In a... So on when you do a PET CT mm. and when you do a lymph node biopsy, a PET CT helps us to stage the lymphoma. So always okay. for all, all blood cancers, we tell, you know, for all solid cancers, we tell stage. Lymphoma also, since it's the solid cancer of the lymph node, we call it as stage 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So stage 3 and 4 are advanced, stage mm. 1 and 2 are low, of which stage 2B, we put it under advanced. Okay. Right? So basically, we have three options at present in India. Mm. So one is a plain chemotherapy, okay. second is immunotherapy, mm. and third is a targeted therapy. Right. Okay. Mm. Right. Targeted therapy. So basically, these immunotherapy and targeted therapy, the side effects are slightly lesser compared to your nominal, you know, plain chemotherapy. Mm. Right. So if you tell it is an early stage Hodgkin's lymphoma, we mm. just give four cycles of chemotherapy and we end it there. Whereas if it is an advanced stage Hodgkin's lymphoma, we give six cycles of chemotherapy. Okay. Right. Mm. But this chemotherapy itself has got its own effects. So in order to minimize the normal, you know, mm. uh, adverse effects of chemotherapy. Mm. We now go in for these kind of targeted therapy and immunotherapy, of which we have two drugs to mention specifically. Mm. Targeted therapy, we have something called as bentuximab vedotin. Okay. And in the immunotherapy, we have something called as nivolumumab as well as pembrolizumab. Okay. Right. So, th so these are some of the drugs that have come for treatment of Hodgkin's lymphoma in the current era mm. and which has come to minimize the adverse effects of chemotherapy. Okay. I'm just curious, how much difference does it make if a patient detects it early? Yeah, if you detect it early, mm. obviously you will get down on your chemotherapy cycles. Oh, okay. For an advanced disease, you may need to do six cycles. Mm. Whereas for an early stage, somewhere between two to four cycles is enough to cure the cancer. Okay. And with obviously when you detect it late, you would be carrying the other disease burden. You know, you may have, suppose say for example, if an Hodgkin's lymphoma is involving your liver. Mm. So in advanced stage, patients do come back with very bad jaundice where we may not be able to administer chemotherapy safely. Mm. So these are all some troubleshoots that we need to do when the patients come late. Okay. And many a times, since it's a cancer of lymph node, your infection fighting capacity will be very low. So mm. people do come up with a very bad infections also. 
Okay. Right. So, so that that's something you need to keep in mind. You know, uh, whenever you're delaying time to treatment, okay. so if the more early, the more lesser the stage. Mm. Your number of cycles will reduce drastically. The need mm. for radiation and the need for dose escalation. All these things will come down drastically. Okay. We have a list of a uh, few myths that uh, people often associate with lymphoma in general yeah. and especially with Hodgkin's lymphoma. And we are going to list it to you and yeah. you are going to clear us. Yeah. Clear, us, uh, yeah. clear it. Okay. Yeah. Only older people get this. No. Rather, it's, I was saying it's, it has got a typical bimodal pattern of distributions. You mm. get a peak in your early adolescent and young adult age group. We call it, in oncology practice, we call them as AYHA, mm. adolescent yeah, and young healthy adult population. So that is, that is one peak where you do, do see Hodgkin's lymphoma. Mm. And once after you cross it, I said there was a typical plateau you see between 30 to 50 years of age. Mm. Then again, the early 50s, 60s, it, peaks, it typically has a peak. Mm. and then drops by 70. So that is the typical bimodal pattern of distribution that we see in Hodgkin's lymphoma. So it can come in younger population also. Okay. The second myth is swollen lymph nodes always means cancer. Yeah. Swollen lymph nodes have got many reasons to, uh, you know, uh, to cause that. Mm. It's the most commonest thing in India even till now is infection. Okay. okay, say for mm. example, if you have got a sore or a injury in your lower foot, mm. your groin lymph nodes get painfully enlarged, mm. right? So the infection again remains a common. So second, as I said, in India, we are not devoid of viruses, you know, we are not short of viruses. We have yeah. so many viruses here, like Epstein bar virus is one such common virus which mm. can cause you swollen lymph nodes. Okay. And third thing is tuberculosis. Again, it's very rampant in India. Mm. So a TB is an exact mimicker of your Hodgkin's lymphoma, mm. where the symptoms can be same, the presentation can be same. Mm. So it's very important that you need to differentiate these infectious causes first, and then comes Hodgkin's lymphoma. So it's like, okay. you know, common things, common. Okay. And uh, cancer treatments always leads to unbearable side effects. Yeah. Usually compared to the other blood cancers that we see, mm. the treatment for Hodgkin's lymphoma is usually light. You okay. know, there are much higher aggressive blood cancers needing more intensive therapy. Mm. I would say compared to that, on a scale of 100, Hodgkin's lymphoma is, you know, 30 to 40 percent intensity of any chemo that we do. Okay. Right? So it's, it is not unbearable, though there are some untoward side effects with each chemotherapy. Mm. Say, for example, we use a drug called bleomycin, which can cause some lung toxicity. Mm. We use a drug called adriamycin, which can get your blood counts low. Mm. You know, we can, and, you know, sometimes we use a drug called acarbacin and all these things, mm. which can have long term, you know, uh, uh, fertility issues. Mm. Right? And we use a drug called vinblastin, which can cause neuropathy. Mm. But having said that, the current era where are we moving through is with the advent of these newer drugs like immunotherapy mm. and targeted therapy. We are trying to get the cumulative effect of this toxic chemotherapeutic drugs down okay. so that we can come down on side effects. Mm. Right? And, and, we are, um, and we have reached here already. That means we have improvised much over the last 50, 60 years of treatment yeah. practice. That's yeah. actually a yeah. great work great all work. these years. Yeah. So in, in current world, I would say for any Hodgkin's lymphoma chemotherapy, the hardly the undesirable side effects that we see are hardly less than 20%. Mm. That's yeah. impressive. Yeah. Okay. So next myth is, if this comes back, there are no options to treat it. Yeah. So first of all, Hodgkin's lymphoma, the relapse rates are only in the range of 10 to 20 percentage. Mm. If we treat it adequately in the first time, mm. you know, it doesn't relapse. It's one of the very well-behaved cancers. I would say okay. to patients' language, we say it's one of the very gently behaved cancer, okay. right? Because the the stage also, it will not usually present in an advanced stage. It will present in an early stage, you know. Mm. It's a very gently behaved cancer. So once it comes back, we call it as relapsed Hodgkin's lymphoma, mm. right? And we have various treatment regimens now on board. Okay, okay. For, to name a few. Again, we can use the same drugs like Brentuximab, Nivolumumab and, you know, with a combination of this, we can add some chemotherapy and we can get this, uh, you know, disease into remission. Mm. And once after we get it into remission, we have to perform an autologous stem cell transplant. Okay. So that is a curative modality. And we have, uh, currently, we have so many relapsed Hodgkin's lymphoma patients mm. getting this second line chemotherapy and then going on to autologous stem cell transplant. Okay. So it's the totally it is incurable is not the word to say. Mm. In fact, it is very much curable. Okay. That's a relief. Yeah. yeah. Okay. When someone is fighting cancer, people who fight it with them mm. are family. Mm. 
uh, uh, what would you like to say to them? How, yeah. how they can cope with the patients and how they can handle the emotional stress behind it? Yeah. The most common thing that I see with patients' families is first, they, 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 they do think, sir, I'm living with a cancer patient. Can I also get cancer? That's the commonest myth that patients' family, you know, uh, does mm. ask. So for them, it's definitely, it's not contagious. Mm. And not all cancers are genetically transmitted. Only few cancers are genetically transmitted. Mm. So first, we need to fear, remove that fear within. Mm. And second thing is, obviously, there is a huge emotional burden financial burden mm. and social burden with the disease yeah right so this is the commonest thing it's still even in our community many times they won't even come out you know that they have cancer they don't want it to disclose to the neighbors you know they'll be seen as an outcast yeah. so all these three things should be overcome mm. financial burden yes it's a major impact in our country you know mm. that sometimes we have to modify treatment based on the financial status of the family mm. so i would prompt everybody to be in active health insurance programs so that's mm. one important thing so by these things you can overcome you know these three major burdens okay as we wrap up i would like to ask you uh, what are the messages that you want to give to pe people who are diagnosed with this lymphoma hodgkin's lymphoma and uh, how can they cope with their life with living with this living with this okay. yeah so first i would say uh, the first step is a correct step you know mm. so once at all you have these symptoms like unresolving fever which is not resolving to more than 14 days, mm. you know, or you have some unexplained weight loss or loss of appetite, mm. these kind of nights. And these are some of the important warning signs that you need to have it in mind. If you have these symptoms, please visit a hematologist. You know, get yourself thoroughly checked that it is not only infection or it is something else, mm. right? And if you come early, the number of cycles of chemotherapy are very much lesser, mm. right? You can kind of bear through the chemotherapy cycles very gently. Mm. And again, it's... The family has to give a proper emotional support to the patient undergoing cancer chemotherapy. Many times, if suppose for example, if a child is undergoing chemotherapy, mm. you you should not the father or the mother should not show their own emotional down you know uh, downhill mm. to the child. You should be in fact all the more aggressive or all the more stronger you know in front of the child so that the mm. child can cope up very well with the treatment that he is undergoing through. Right, and we have a lot of options wide openly available these days, and mm. more and more treatment lines are coming much, you know, ahead. Even after second line, third line, we are able to get these patients out. Mm. So diagnose early, detect early, mm. be compliant with the doctor. Whatever number of cycles he sees, you know, you need to be, you need to stick on to the doctor and complete the treatment duration. Mm. So all these will lead to improved survival. So that's what I would like to say to the community. And one last question: Can a patient return back to normalcy? After yeah. the treatments are done. Yeah. So once, if you are done with a fixed duration, mm. right, like six cycles, and we are, and the doctor uh, does a repeat check scan, repeat PET CT scan to say that the disease is cured. Mm. After three months, still three months, we do advise some kind of isolation protocols be within the house. Mm. But once after three months of treatment completion, the immunity reboots. You know, mm. by six months they are almost free. You know, they can be back to the society. Mm. And we have some vaccination protocols because these chemotherapy pro uh, mm. things kind of get down on your immunity. So we kind of have some vaccination, safety vaccination mm. protocols. And after that, it's just only a OPD visit to your own treating doctor. Okay. We do have some fertility, I mean, checkpoints. Like, mm. you know, you do, we do check the echo, we do check the lung. Mm. Because after you getting exposed to chemotherapy, there are some checkpoints that yeah. we have. Heart, lung, kidney functions, liver functions. And once we pass all these things, mm. then you're almost back to normal. Actually, doctors, this conversation, I think it will be very reassuring. And uh, if, if someone is going through this, I think this will give a clear a lot of their questions. Thank you for your insightful conversation. Thank I you. loved having you here. Thank you. It's it's pleasure to be here as well. Thank you. Doctor.